welcome back to this part two of the tour of the Williamson Tunnels in Liverpool. Now, in part one, I talk about the reason the tunnels were built and I talk about Joseph Williamson. And if you haven't watched that video, I strongly recommend you go and watch this video. Um, that's part one and it'll put this into context for you. Anyway, let's crack on. So in part two, I'm going to show you this map. Now you'll see that the tunnels are an extensive work, set of workings under the streets of Liverpool and they're kind of cut in half by the railway. That cutting, that railway cutting that you see there goes through to Liverpool Lime Street Station. On the right hand side that's the official tourist attraction in Liverpool. We didn't explore that, we were with another group of uh, people called the Friends of the Williamson Tunnels and what they do is they're exploring the extensive set of tunnels over to the left hand side of the railway line. So in part one we went to the Paddington site um, and basically the Paddington site is just a set of levels. We just went down the levels basically. Not to underestimate it, it was amazing. But it was easy, easy to follow because we went down the levels. In part two, we're going to go to Joseph Williamson's house or what is left of Joseph Williamson's house. And we're going to look at the extensive workings underneath the house and around the house. Now, what you'll find, it's a bit more difficult to follow uh, this video because what you'll find is that we sort of like go into one area, come back out, go into another area, come back out. So we're kind of dipping in and out of different areas. But towards the end of the video, we do actually go down, down, deep underground to see the current workings and the work in progress where they're trying to um, extend the tunnels and just see how far they go. Will they find the Great Hall? I'll explain that in a bit for you. Anyway, let's crack on and go to the remains of Joseph Williamson's house and crack on with the tour. So there you go, there's the remains of Joseph Williamson's house. All we've got left, unfortunately, is the front fascia of it. That's about 200 years old, that front fascia. Criminally, the rest of it was pulled down in the 1930s, and I really don't know why um, they left the front fascia. I need to ask that question, don't I? Um, you'll see on the left-hand side there, there's rather a large entrance, and that was where the horses and carts would have pulled in. Um, here's the back of the house, and you can see it's sort of like there's metalwork there holding it together quite fascinating now it had uh, substantial cellars that were f again were filled in and have been uncovered by the uh, friends of the Williamson tunnels and here is where the house uh, the subterranean house workings begin this is another part of the Williamson tunnels this is called the house site as you can see obviously behind me is uh, Joseph Williamson's house this is what they discovered under the house. Um, looks like we're going to head into some kind of cellar now. Uh, and again, two years ago, this was all completely buried underground. So we're in the cellar. Joseph Williamson's cellar of this house and down here it looks like there's some sort of ovens or fires are these ovens Mike? yeah these would have actually been the ovens this would have been like the kitchen area of the house so like his, his cook his servants would have been working down here um, cooking his meals um, boiling water for his bath or whatever um, this would have been like a real hub of, of the house basically yeah yeah so Ovens down here, um, there's a stone skirting board, which is incredible. Um, these, some kind of fireplace here, absolutely amazing. And then this, there's a bay window here that we think would have looked out over into an open yard. Um, but just look at this, absolutely. <laughs> this place is a gem, this place is a national treasure. I'm telling you, outhouses, yards, an old sink over there a stone skirting board, the remains of ovens. Now there was an army barracks here as well and for some reason, placed here much later, we, uh, there's this urinal here which would have been for the officers because it had little partitions in it. Marks in the brickwork, brick manufacturers marks in some of these bricks I'll show you.
So this is the boiler room we're going in. So the house above Joseph Williamson's house was, de was demolished in the 1930s and the other story of the way these tunnels have survived and survived the different adaptations that people have used for them over the, over the years is that this above here was a garage in the 1930s, a car garage and apparently they had boilers down here uh, that heated the garage um, so it's just incredible isn't it so thank god that they didn't tear this down or dig it out because we've still got it to look at but again you know a baker's storage area a glass manufacturer and now a garage that used this place for as a boiler room Now this fireplace is a curious thing because there's no chimney. There's Isn't no way, there's no way of the smoke getting out. Oh so it ends there. It ends there. So quite why we built a fireplace, but we don't know. Possibly uh, practice for uh, how oh, I know that isn't it like a bottle and stuff like that. Quite something that's like new Yeah. So, as we're saying up there, um, this part of the tunnels was a garage, and this is some of the stuff they found. Now, there is an adaptation in here, there's a block and tackle up on the uh, ceiling, so I'll show you that now. So, obviously, as Mike was saying, there's a record that this part of the cellars of the house were utilised as a garage in the 1930s. So I'm guessing some of these tools and some of these things we're looking at possibly date back to around the 1930s. Who can tell, eh? So this section now that we're going to, we've been told that this is the wine bins. We don't know why it's called the wine bins, but Mike assures us there's a reason why it's called the wine bins. So let's go down and see why it's called the wine bins. Oh my God. So hang on, what, what, where's all this from? Right, the actual shells are original. Um, they were used as a prop for a film um, many years ago, but we think this would have actually been the wine cellar uh, because obviously it fits these shells quite nicely. But also it's quite um, more elaborate than a normal cellar. If you look at this lovely dressed stone here, it doesn't support the roof at all. It's purely for uh, decoration. You can actually put your hands right behind it. There's no support there at all. Um, so we think this would have been like Joseph Williamson's wine cellar, wow. which is why we, we give it the name the wine bins. Right. Just shows you, doesn't it, that this is a site of sort of um, archaeological interest and everything. And back in the day in the 30s, when this was adapted to be a garage, nobody cared. They just let them do what they want with it stick a block and tackle up above you know use it as a garage stick a boiler in here nowadays obviously it'd be protected um but uh, interesting story isn't it right so when we originally sort of started digging here or got permission to dig here that was actually a hole in the wall and that was a way into this passageway here this had all been bricked up uh, but once we cleared through the tunnel the passageway there we found steps coming down leading to the, the brick wall. So what we've done, we've actually knocked this through now and reinstated the steps back into the original passageway. So now we would have been like within the house, within the cellars, because you can actually see the plaster work on the, on the walls. I presume that sort of site in front there was what you kind of encountered in a lot of the tunnels, wasn't yeah. it? Just, it? Just stuff just 
infill like that. Yeah, I mean this whole section was filled in like that, uh, right. and we've slowly excavated all this out. So we're underneath the house now, or what would have been the house? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, originally, those steps there would have been used by the owners of the house because you can see they're quite wide and they're quite grand. Um, so originally, at some point in the house's history, um, they would have come out of a like morning room or a day room into possibly a wall garden. <coughs> um, we know this because the steps are quite wide. So if it being a servant's quarters or a servant's area, it would have been a narrow staircase. So this is quite wide. So the lady of the house would have walked down here and into potentially a garden area. Right. At some point in the house of history, they've then extended the house um, and this has then become part of a cellar. And you can see over there like a, a fireplace that has been built. So again, this probably would have then been used by servants or whoever worked in this area on the, on the house. You may have seen this in part one, but as this was used as a Victorian and Edwardian dumping ground, some of the things that they find when they're excavating these tunnels are amazing. Just take a look at this. Okay, so we leave the wine bin area now, go back into the uncovered cellar area and then off to another part of the tunnels. So more again, we're now going to the sandstone arch and the banqueting hall. We just keep giving the names of these places and it's not till we get down there we realise why they're called thus. But let's go and take a look into some more tunnels down here. Yeah. So is this all made out of some sandstone? Yeah. This is the sandstone arch. Um, wow. So what we're we looking at there? Right. That would have led to a passageway. Um, that's currently on the other side, uh, which we don't really have access to or permission to dig at the moment so we've left this as it is for now. So there's more through there? There's more through there, um, there's more tools and chambers on that site and hopefully potentially the Great Tunnel as well which we've yet to find. The Great Tunnel? The Great Tunnel, it's a huge tunnel, um, the army used it to practice building pontoon bridges and things in, it is massive um, but we haven't found a way into it yet. So this is this will be quite a thing when you find this thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's what we're hoping to find and hopefully the tool we're excavating now, we're hoping that we may find a way into it from there. The Great Tunnel. Ironically, this largest of spaces is yet to be found in this underground architectural enigma. Here we are at the Sandstone Arch and we're possibly right next to the undiscovered Great Tunnel, filled in many, many years ago. This will be amazing if they find it and if they do find it Mike's going to let me know and I'll be going back down to Liverpool to take a look at it even if I have to, if I have to crawl in on my belly to have a look at it. Imagine what it would be like to dig this vast space out. Here's a very very old photograph of it. Look at that. Sandstone Arch is quite special. When you think about it, this is underground. Um, they did work by candlelight. But all these stones are perfectly dressed. Each block has a slight curve on it. So it's a perfect curve all the way around. It's not just like a simple straight block. It's an actual perfect curve on the stone. They've gone to that level of detail. And if you look at the dress stone there as well, 
What are we looking at there? Do, do, oh yeah, the way they've done the stones. Yeah, they dress stone so you can see the dress work on the stone. Oh yeah, they've done like a pattern in the mm. middle and then and then like I say, it's a perfect curve on each of these stones all the way around. Do you know what this reminds me of the way you keep sort of digging and finding more and more sort of chambers and more and more tunnels? Mm -hmm. It reminds me of Howard Carter exactly. uh, when he was like found Tutankhamun's yeah. tomb in Egypt, um, just it's, just uncovering more and more treasures as you go, isn't it? Well, especially when we were in Paddington, that's just how it felt. Like every time we were, you know, every every spadeful, it was like we we'd uncover all these like artifacts and things. We just did not know what to expect. So I'm sat by a bit of a mysterious tunnel here. This tunnel that we're going to look down now, so it probably goes back to when this was a quarry, which was before the Williamson tunnels were dug, and we think this is some sort of drainage, sort of gully tunnel, if you like, and it goes down through the rock to the cliff edge. Now, when I say the cliff edge, we're on a, a hill here in Liverpool, and it drops down further along this way where the tunnel goes, it sort of drops downwards and then we're sort of heading down towards street level then are we yeah, in, right, in yeah. the centre of the city yeah, and right. then obviously onwards then to where the river is but I'll just show you this uh, this tunnel I'm looking at <laughs> I want to go down it but it's uh, scary as well So now from the sandstone arch we head back up to the surface and then down towards the banqueting hall and this is the final place we'll look at and this will take us to the current working face of the Williamson tunnels. So we're off to the banqueting hall now and this is a natural fissure in the rock uh, known as the gash. It's actually been used and been dressed by the adverse diggers or the quarrymen to actually yeah, make the difference between the two of Wow. This is uh, possibly a natural fault line in the rock that was widened slightly by the original tunnellers. Uh, not for the claustrophobic, but it does get a little bit worse than this. Oh, Too much gear. So, this is the banqueting hall. And he, just because it's a large hall, is that why we call it that? No, there is a story behind it. Right. Uh, the story goes that um, Joseph. Joseph Williamson invited his friends around for a big meal and they took him into his dining room in his house and the meal that he actually laid before them was a poor meal like mutton, beans, you know, a, a pauper's meal. Uh, a lot of his friends were disgusted and left. Um, the people that stayed behind, he said, right, now that I know who my real friends are, come and follow me. And he brought them down here um, where there was a banquet fit for a king wow. um, down here and this is where it gets the name, the banqueting hall. He was a bit of a wise man, Joseph, wasn't he? Yeah, though since we've excavated this tunnel out, we think that is a bit of an urban legend, an urban, you know, because you've seen where the kitchens are yeah. and 
how the vats are actually get down here. So for a meal to be actually held. <laughs> yeah, and prepared the, down here, yeah. Prepared and brought down here kind of thing. And plus as well, guests and the sort of the flagery and all that sort of actually come down here and be uh, They wouldn't have been impressed, would they? No. <laughs> and more stuff you found. Yeah. So, so far, a lot of the tools we've looked at have been done, they've been excavated. We're going to go now to where the volunteers are actually actively working and digging out a, a new section of the tunnels. So this is quite exciting. So a bit of a unknown territory here we're going into now. So we're heading now out of the banqueting hall, just down the way we came towards that little archway there. And this is uh, where the, the volunteers are now currently actively working, digging out a new section. Okay, so we're going into this new section now. Oh, yeah. So. so yeah, this was all filled in. We didn't even know this trench was here. And as we were clearing up the spoil from the banqueting hall, we found this trench. Um, and as we got deeper and deeper, we then found this cut in the, in the sandstone. Beyond that lot was actual brickwork. It had been bricked up, but it had been bricked from the other side. So it hadn't been bricked from this side, it had been bricked from another tunnel on the other side. When we broke through, we found another tunnel. Um, again, pretty much filled up to ceiling height. Um, and this is where we've been working now. Um, it's a lot trickier to clear this tunnel up because this is the only way you're going out. And plus, we're about halfway in the tunnel, so we've got spoiled above us as well as below us. So this is the only way out where, where you can bring the, At the spoil? At the yeah. moment, um, we have found potential other ways into the tunnel, but they're obviously all filled in, so we're kind of working our way in through the back door, basically. Right, well, let's go ahead. Okay. It looks a bit uh, treacherous underfoot down there. <laughs> There is a bit slippy on this bit, but once you get past that, you're fine. Right. You, you can't find down here. You hold this. Yeah. So, so I'll do this for you. have to pass me that as well in a second. Okay. Right, bit of a confined space, space here, going in there sort of backwards. Bloody hell. Once we've got the add that on. That's what you mean, Colin. Ah, oh, okay. This is one hell of a place. Well, where are we going up this ladder here? Yeah, go up the ladder, yeah. Talk about confined space, we've just come through there. So, obviously, this is the bit going up a ladder now that is still a work in progress in the tunnels. <laughs> you have to forgive the dodgy camera angles because I'm walking up a ladder here. Right, so this is basically our work in progress. Um, this is the new tool that we found um, a few months back. Again, like the rest of Williamson's tools, this was filled up pretty much to ceiling height. Um, and we're slowly and carefully excavating this site now. Um, as you've just seen, we've come in sort of like halfway through, halfway up the tunnel, um, with spoil actually above us, uh, behind you, and we wouldn't shut room. Um, and we've had to carefully plan how we actually ex excavate this tunnel out. Um, 
We don't quite know where it leads to, but we're hoping that it will eventually lead to the brake tunnel, um, possibly this way. If you look at this archway here, it's really beautifully dressed sandstone, um, which is quite grand for like a, a what is basically an underground tunnel. So potentially it may have been an official entrance into Williamson's house from the street level below. Um, again, we don't know until we actually sort of clear this out. We don't really know what we've actually got here. So I don't understand what I'm looking at. Where are you digging? You're digging down there? We're digging uh, there and we're also digging, you'd have to go round here. We're digging through there as well. Right, so because where that wall is there, that's obviously the end of it there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, for, for that bit, but then there's a passageway that goes that way. So to get there, have you got to climb up here? Yeah, I have to climb up there. So there's only one way into there? Yeah. Right. Um, right. If you look at this sort of pillar that's being built here, this probably would have dated from either the garage or from development work that's been on the adjacent site. And they've actually driven these piles in through the tunnels and smashed through the, the roof. All right, so that's from a modern works up above? Yeah, from right. sort of like either third, 1930s onwards um, right. developments that have actually broken through the tunnel. So we're having to like work around of those. Right. And this is what you do. So basically down here is fresh digging. You're following the bedrock down because I take it obviously where there's a fascia Somebody's caught into that, haven't they? Yeah, that's right. So you're following down now and you're hoping that... Are you thinking down is the Great Hall or...? We think the Great Hall is lower and somewhere over over there. Over this way? Over this way, somewhere. Um, we don't quite know where because um, we originally thought it was higher. But as we've done exploratory digs, um, we haven't found it at sort of like from ground level. So we think it's a lot lower than what we originally thought. Right. Well, there's obviously an entrance somewhere and this grand sort of sandstone arch here indicates that this was used for something more than just a you know a little narrow passageway it was obviously used for something and a proper entrance either into Williamson's house or into you know the network <laughs> so if you look down there at the floor where the torch is now I'll move it now You'll see that there's the top of something. We're looking at bricks on the on the floor where we are. Well, that is potentially another chamber underneath there, underneath those bollards. And over there in the corner, well, I'll put the uh, I'll zoom in now down there. You can see another potential. Do we think that's going somewhere down in that corner? We think potentially um, there's a passageway that leads where the. Where this is being bricked up, we think this is being bricked up at a later date, so potentially there's another passageway that goes and carries on that way. And as the volunteers carry on with the work, it's time for us to uh, leave the way we came through the little narrow arch again. You wouldn't use it for mixing water. No, but it's not just to fill in the cracks. First rung is the hardest yeah, one. So there you go, the Williamson Tunnels. My mind is absolutely blown, um, incredible. And thank God for the people, the volunteers that are down here excavating. Um, they're here every weekend doing the work. Um, absolute gem, absolute gem. I can't believe that this oh. place isn't more well known than what it actually is. So there you go. I'd like to thank Mike for his patience and his brilliant knowledge 
that has made this tour very, very special. Thank you to Lynn for inviting us down and getting us into the tunnels. Thank you very much, Lynn. And to the volunteers who give up the weekends and the Sundays and dig out these tunnels by hand, it can't be easy. And of course, not forgetting Mr. Joseph Williamson. You, sir, are quite an enigma and a few of us would like to sit down and chat with you over a cup of tea and just find out what was the reason for these tunnels. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Mm -hmm.